Hi guys, welcome back to part four. I'm actually excited about this one. If you've stuck through this far, thank you. <laughs> I know the other three were a little bit boring. There wasn't really much going on with them. But um, this episode, I'm actually going to go through how I created the blades. And hopefully this will give you an idea of how you could do something similar in your own project. Or maybe use it for something else. So, I had two ideas of how I could go around doing this. The first was using a shader in Unreal to manually control the length of the blade. But I thought with this, I might get some issues where you could actually see inside with it only clipping. So what I did was I actually used a morph target. I hadn't actually used these in Blender before, so I was still trying to get used to it. The first thing I did was create a cylinder. I, I started with the first one, the correct length that I wanted. And then I made a duplicate. Because I know in max morph targets, they have to have the same faces and the same number of vertices. So following that logic, I done the same thing here. And it actually worked pretty well. Apart from the first time I did it, it was in reverse. If I moved the slider from 0 to 1, it would actually shrink. So it took a little bit of getting used to. But if you're doing this, just on your import settings, make sure you have a skeleton mesh created. That will give you access to a morph target in Unreal. And then you can add that to the object, which will bring it in as a physics object, a skeletal mesh, but it'll also give you the ability to control the morph target, which is what I happened to do. But you saw earlier on, it actually crashed and it done it again here. This took me too long to figure out. It was just because the mesh in Blender was missing a material. So I had to apply a material to it. And then it re-imported straight away, which I was quite pleased with. Here, what I'm doing is I'm actually just I'm just opening it up so I can apply the material to the mesh to make sure it looks all right because I didn't actually create any UVs for it. Since the material would glow, you wouldn't need to unwrap it because it would be the same all over. And then I was just testing the morph target to make sure it was going in the correct direction from zero to one. I was actually quite surprised at how easy this was to set up. So I'm going to apologize here because I actually didn't show how I implemented the lightsaber into the pickup actor. All that was is I duplicated the default cube, which you can pick up in the VR template. And then I just apl applied the static mesh to it for the saber. That's all it really was. And then you can see here I'm adding the blade as well. Because the emissive material is actually applied to the mesh for the blade and I'm not doing it afterwards, I just moved the blade slightly lower than the base mesh or the saber. That way, even with the emissive material inside of it, you couldn't see it from the exterior. Here all I did was I dragged the, a reference to the saber blade into the scene and created a morph target. To control the morph target, I needed to do it over a time period. So I actually use a timeline. I messed up here by using a vector to begin with. I'm not too sure why, but <laughs> I, I realized immediately after I made it. But you should use a float because we only need the one value to go from zero to one. So this allows us to do that easy enough and play it over time. We can also plug this into another node. So when you press the button on a flip flop, which I believe I use, you can actually reverse it as well. So we don't have to set up another timeline because I'm testing the morph target at the minute and not working out how to make it interactable I'm just using the grab function so once you pick up the lightsaber it will automatically turn on and fire the event this worked really well for debugging because the first time I tried it I realized I forgot the actual morph target name I realized pretty quickly that this was actually in the physics handle I believe it is and all you need to do is find your morph target and then put the name for it in here. I also added a variable so I could control the speed of the graph. I tried multiplying it, but I realized early on that if you up the multiplier, it actually changed the length of the lightsaber and not the speed. Here, all I'm doing is trying to test the speed of the lightsaber and trying to find a sweet spot. I realized that 0.2, I think I go for, is quite a nice speed for it. So if, you, if you're doing this yourself, just play around with them settings until you find a speed that you like. But the next step was to actually do it so I could 
turn the lightsaber on and off with the controller. If you're not too sure how to do this, don't worry about it. I'm going to release a video soon showing you how you can interact with physics objects or the VR template. But a quick breakdown is I add another function to the pickup actor interface, which I can call from the blueprint itself. I just call this interact. And then in the inputs for the project settings, I actually create two more. So I've got left hand input and right hand input. That way I can actually fire it based on which controller is interacting with the object. I really like keeping my code organized, so I actually jump back into the player pawn where I set up the controls for the interact. You can see here I'm trying to interact with the object, but it's not working, and it's realized because I forget to get the left controller and get attached actor. If you follow along, this is all you really need to do. Hopefully you'll be able to get it, but I'll do an in-depth video of how to set this up, and it'll just be explained a little bit easier and slow down, obviously. But that's all it really took. I can now pick up an object and then control it via the hand. And to retract the blade, all I'm using is a flip-flop on the interact. And then when it switches, so every time the button's pressed, it goes between open and closed, and it just goes between both of those. The next step was to work out whether it was working in both hands. So I thought, what better way to do this than duplicate the lightsaber? Nothing more fun than having two of them. So to do this, I duplicate the material because I wanted them to stand out and then I just duplicate the actor that contains the lightsaber but before doing that I jump back into the blueprint this is just so I can add a little bit of code so I can set the material and the light color without having to go into the code every single time to do this it just means I can select the mesh in the scene and control it from the details panel it just makes modifying the actor a little bit easier to do and quicker I make sure the actor's got a default color as well, so I just add the blue material that I created earlier to it. That way when it starts it'll automatically have a material and I don't have to apply them twice. I then just attach it to the grab event. So once the lightsaber is immediately picked up, the color's changed. I could do this in a function, and I probably would do later on, but with being in a rush and trying to get it done as fast as possible, I just kind of just went with it. The next stage was to add a light source. I wanted it to admit light in both the VR scene and affect the world around it. And this just allowed to made it ground a little bit easier and not just use the bloom effect that's coming from the material. This actually worked really well to get the feeling across that I was going for, but you can see it's rather bright. So I just had to go back in there and tone it down. But all I'm doing here is having a little play around really and seeing how the light interacts with the world around it. If you guys have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see, even if it's just recreating a prop from a movie or building something in VR, please let me know down below and that way we can maybe do something with it. But jumping back in, what I realized is when I picked up the lightsaber the light was already on. So I actually drag in a reference from the point light that we've created there I can set the visibility. I then create a bool variable which allows me to turn this on and off. At the minute it would stay on one stage which would be off by default but to turn this on and off and to be able to set it I actually just attach it to the flip-flop. All this is really doing is saying when the code fires from channel A turn the light on and when it fires from channel B turn it off. I then just jump back into the project as a debug. You can see here when I pick it up, there's no actual light source, but when I press the interact button, it turns the light on. It's actually worked really well, especially when clipping through the world. I was quite pleased with the end result. With the blade now in and the light working, it still felt like there was something missing. So I actually jumped over to this website here, Freesound, which I found, and started downloading some sound effects. I didn't really download too many, all I did was I found a lightsaber on, a lightsaber off, and a lightsaber idle sound effect I believe. And then I just made sure they were WAV format. It doesn't really matter what format you go for, as I believe Unreal can do WAV, MP4 and a couple of others. So just choose a format you're comfortable with. I haven't mentioned it so far, but make sure your file format or your structure is understandable because there's nothing worse than getting lost in your folders when trying to find stuff. So all I did was in my lightsaber folder that I was using, 
I created a sound file, that way I could keep everything in one place. I also downloaded one sound effect, which was MP3. So I used an online converter to change it to .wav. I like doing this just so I know every file format is the same. And I won't get any issues down the line with maybe devices not accepting specific formats. As I believe there may be some issues with mobile devices selecting different types. But this is just a personal thing. Don't worry about it too much. <laughs> Here what I'm doing is I start to do it so I spawn the sound at a location but I realized pretty quickly that if I was to spawn a sound and then move it the sound would stay in the same place but the lightsaber would move somewhere else. So I actually change this and apply an audio to the mesh or the actor. This allows me to drag in a reference and just set the sound effect. I can then place this in the same place so when you turn the lightsaber on it sets the sound for on and when you turn it off it sets the sound for off. It cancels each other out and it works really well. I also hook up a play so once it starts it actually plays a sound effect. All I'm doing here is trying to tidy up my code. I don't want to turn it into a bowl of spaghetti so I'm just trying to make it organized so I understand what's where. And later on I don't show it but I do comment my code. So if, you, if you're not doing that, I highly recommend doing it just to make it easier. Uh, for the idle sound effect, I also set that to loop. That way it wouldn't stop and it would just keep going once the lightsaber was open. I was really surprised by the sound that, actually, that I actually got from these effects. And they worked really well. Here I'm also doing it so I can change the light color from the editor. This just makes it, when I duplicate it in a minute, just makes it easier and I can control the settings a little bit more. I forgot to mention, one of the benefits of using an audio to drive the sound as attached to the mesh is once you move the lightsabers and you move them around your head, it actually travels with the sabers. So you get sort of like 360 sound effects and it works a little bit nicer than just having a static sound. Here all I'm doing for the idle sound is changing the volume. I found it was a bit too quiet in the original scene. After playing around with it, you see me throw the lightsabers. This is so I could get an idea of the attenuation radius. So how the sound would affect based on distance. Originally it didn't work too well, so I go back into the blueprint and I just start playing around with the audio volumes. So I actually have to reduce these quite a bit to make them work properly. But it hit a point where I was really happy with it. And this is where I get excited because I actually try it and I realize that I haven't actually been recording desktop audio so unfortunately I don't have any audio with these clips but just for you guys I recorded a new one and here it is with sound. It's quite difficult to describe how well this feels or how good it feels to be able to use lightsabers in VR with sound effects. So I really hope you enjoy this one. In part five, I'll go over how I created the environment that you can see here. And you can actually hear the sounds a little bit better because I re-recorded this part for you. <laughs> so hopefully this is a, a nice little peek at what's coming in the next video. But until then, I hope you stay safe and I'll see you over there. Bye.